usually talk about these useless subjects because why not? Uh, today I'm not using my regular microphone, I'm using uh, the iPad. Mainly because the living room is cold. And anyone who knows about cold, whether or not, we don't have fireplaces in a lot of houses in Las Vegas, so when I'm at, uh, it does not have a fireplace. So that definitely makes it colder than it should be. Uh, two two subjects here that are foofy. I don't want to. I don't really want to touch on anything that's meaningful, really, because well, I feel that's covered by other people. And two, you really can get that anywhere. Um, you know what I do focus on is stuff just you know I'll cover th I've covered these subjects before uh, Vampire Mike is the only one who might recall uh, a few years ago the um, FU netcast that came and went um, surprisingly someone else not me preserved all the episodes of the FU netcast and I have to go get them back I appreciate their efforts, though, and um, all they had to do was ask if they wanted copies of the FU netcast. Now, as somebody who's worked in television, something that I've seen not successfully, believe it or not, is digital television. Digital television, to me, has been an absolute failure. 100%. Uh, it it came on the cusp of Netflix and Hulu and YouTube emerging as well as the true disruptive technology. But I, I want to go farther back. I want to go into uh, the beginning of mass media consumption. And what in the hell happened here? And the farthest back I can go, at least from memory, I don't... I'm not going to go jump into research or anything while I do this. This is all from the top of my head. The farthest back I can go is, it has to be the, uh, the invention and release of the phonograph, the cylindrical phonograph, the original Edison phonograph, which I, was it the 1850s or 1870s? Nonetheless, the Edison phonograph. And the Edison phonograph was exactly what it was. It was people being able to go ahead and listen to recordings, mainly music, I believe, according to movies made a hundred years later or so. And eventually there would be disc Phonographs, what we call records today. Some people call it vinyl, some people call them LPs. Uh, properly, they're phonographs, but I, I suppose calling records is just as fun. I don't know where record came from. I mean, it says phonograph record, as in, you know, I, it's a record of something, whatever. The word recording has record in it. But these technologies, while disruptive, weren't superseded. I mean, yes, um, I can't take, even though you might see this in movies or something, I actually cannot take a vinyl record, a flimsy vinyl record. I cannot put that in an old cranked up gramophone or phonograph. It will crush the disc and start recording my audio onto uh, I'll start cutting a new groove, unintentionally. I'm sure other people have gotten it working or whatever through modifications or whatever, so I'm not here to talk about that. That's for like Techmoan or, or Databits or the 8-Bit Guy or somebody. That, that's a different YouTuber. I'm here just to talk. Just talk. I provide you no visual examples or anything. I just talk and that's it. And you see the bouncing grumpy back and forth, back and forth. What does this have to do with digital TV? Well, I'm getting there. Uh, as the um, movies also came out around this time, 
and the average person couldn't own anything. The first distribution, obviously, of the film. Well, the radio, well, the radio was really perfected uh, and uh, streamlined well into the uh, early 21st century. Television wasn't streamlined until, I would say, the late 1960s. And even then, there were things that were still rough and raw as the 70s wore on. And during the 1970s was when television went from this quirky medium that everyone wanted to this exacting medium with precise time and fluidity. Not saying there wouldn't be errors or anything, obviously. But uh, television, even in its analog form, is exactly what people were looking for at a particular time in history for entertainment. It was the 70s and not only gave us some of the best theatrical films, but as some of the best sporting events broadcast on television, some of the best political theater broadcast on television, and movies called miniseries that weren't constrained to the limitations of exhibition in the theater. You know, Star Wars obviously came out in the 1970s. So as that went about, the idea for HD TV and digital TV weren't concurrent. HD TV was originally going to be an analog signal that would be interpreted similar to closed captioning or called teletext or telelex or something like that. Uh, data services that in a way is kind of digital but not because it interprets a low frequency sound found in the signal of the television broadcast. And from there, a receiver would pick it up, any receiver. So the idea would be that if people didn't have HD, they would simply pick up the HD signal. And if people did have HD, they would get a nice new signal. For some reason, digital stepped into the picture, and I believe that was simply a conspiracy to make everyone buy a new television set. See, God forbid they have integrity and build us things that last. No, they, they want us to go and constantly keep buying. Okay, for their bottom line, it looks good. That's not how it works with the consumer. Uh, this, is, this is the problem, I feel, that it, it seems to be a problem overall. It's like how to keep people to keep giving you your money. A restaurant has it figures it out. Everyone needs to eat. But not everyone needs to be entertained. Some people's form of entertainment is a whittle wood while whistling at the sunset. The movie can't compete with that. Some people like to be entertained and get all enraged and everything because they're listening to Mike Savage on Drive Time or something. Um, full disclosure, one time I was listening to Mike Savage and he got so pissed off, I don't even remember why about, he got so pissed off on his show and he said, dirty motherfuckers live on the air. And uh, I also caught one time flipping channels and Rush Limbaugh screamed, that's bullshit. <laughs> and then it went straight to commercial. Uh, so uh, that's just some funny I've caught scanning through talk radio. But yeah. Uh, Digital, I think, was completely pushed on us as the ultimate scam. See, I'm not calling the CD a scam. I'm not calling the tape recorder a scam. And I'm not even calling MP3, or whatever I should say, like an iTunes store or Amazon MP3 offering. I'm not even calling those a scam. Because stuff wears out. Not everybody treats their records, tapes, and discs, even MP3 files, immaculate. No, no, it's it's the opposite. Go to any thrift store or used store that deals in used goods. There's a reason you don't find any S games in the boxes that often with construction men and the dust sleep. That's just something that happens. People don't take care of their stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm wholly guilty on this. I have 
have comics that are valuable that have less value because I just let them get trashed. Not, not because I'm an asshole or something, just because it's not on my mind. It's not first and foremost on my mind to take care of everything. The other thing is I'm, I'm just not into collecting anymore. I got plenty of stuff to last me to the end of my life. So, in a way, I'm, I'm done. I'm done with collecting. I don't mind the occasional new magazine or something, but I got websites for that where I don't have to collect. So, where, what does this have to do with digital television, yes? Digital television, besides me saying it's a scam, has not lived up to its potential. First, it confused everybody. Secondly, it doesn't use the same frequencies and so forth and so Okay, that's all technical. Okay, let, let's not even go that way. When I worked at the TV station, people would call us wanting to set up uh, their television antennas. Right? They said, you know, I would get very rude because it's not my job to do that. My job is to make sure the station runs. Not that you can get the station. It's up to you, the viewer, to get the station. So, yes, I would tell these viewers, you you know, do this, do that. And then when they say, well, look, listen, listen. We have a 50,000 watt frequency on the channel you're asking about. So, why can't, you know, you, you have to, it, 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 you're probably in CA mode and not A mode. A is for antenna, C is for community access, but that's what cable tunes into. See, cable TV originally started off as this uh, community access where people just couldn't pick up antennas, so they started stringing up, they put up a big community antenna. And this antenna would get all the channels from the local metropolitan area or other areas too, it'd be a whole bunch of channels, but it would get them all crystal clear. And then that would be strung up with amplifiers and so forth and so on, all along the telephone lines. So that way everybody could have television. And then they'd pay a small fee, uh, I mean real small fee, to keep this uh, thing, uh, this antenna ma maintained. And, and so they remain with their access. That's why it's community access antenna. But um, that all changed, obviously. Somebody got the idea of using community access television to have television channels. So now that in the digital age, um, I simply will not go back to cable television. I can't. I can't see myself ever paying for television ever again. Except for one thing. See, I can't see myself. But because children's program is so shitty over the air, that I have no choice. Because, uh, uh, you know, I mean... If I wanted my child to watch something, I just want it to be on without worry. I don't want to sit there tinkering. So, the only way I can get around that is to get a pay TV service again and let them watch Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon or Disney all day long. But those channels, from what I've seen from Saber Sparks YouTube analyses, uh, I guess those aren't doing too hot either. I don't know. I think that all cable channels should become over-the-air digital channels, and they don't need cable anymore, really. Let them all compete for ratings and ads. Let's see how long they can last. See, they can't last. They need the cable subscriber fees. So, with cable, um, I mean, excuse me, with digital, everything seems to be crystal clear, except now there's nothing to watch. And so, nearly 10 years on, because the, the digital switchover date get, getting moved back further and further and further, but nearly 10 years on, and people are still referring it as a new technology, 
It's not new. It's almost 10 years old. And the people who haven't figured it out, I mean, they've just gotten older. And, and, um, and I wish more old people were sharp. Maybe it's because my grandparents stayed, stayed sharp when I grew up that I don't, I don't, I don't understand old people who get dumber. It seems to start in their 60s too. Like I said, I didn't experience this with anybody in my family. I mean, I can understand forgetfulness and stuff like that, um, but not not to the severe buoyancy of a buoy. I mean, holy cow, uh, have I encountered some people, especially when I worked at the television station. Um, Ten years ago, I encountered I encountered some really dumb shits. Call the station up. And wow, holy cow, are you, are you people retarded? How do you get to the point where, uh, you know, I've got, I've had to wonder that. How does, a, how do people develop to that point? Uh, maybe too much red meat. Maybe the vegetarians got something. Maybe too much vegetarian diet. Maybe the meatitarians got something. I don't know. What I'm saying is I don't know. I don't know. I look at I look at some people. They're in their 70s. They're they're sharp, articulate, energetic. I've seen people in their 90s, sharp, articulate, energetic. <laughs> and I've seen these kind of people. They just drive you batshit crazy. So uh, being in that position during the digital television switch. Wow. 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 I could not believe. I cannot believe at all how just awful these people were. Just could not deal with them. Well, after that was done, um, you know, we were happy, my wife and I, with channels that we began to see. Me TV made us happy. They ran shows that we liked to watch. Heroes and Icons, you know, um, I don't know if they're still on the air, but Heroes and Icons I liked because in the evening when it was the channel 13 affiliate i can't get the channel it's affiliated with now but when it was our channel 13 affiliate it was channel 13.3 and i liked it because uh with the exception of maybe a sad commercial that shouldn't run usually involving either beaten dogs or starving children um by watching heroes and icons for four hours i didn't have to switch channels every day four hours. I could leave it on and I'd watch two episodes of No Street Blues and two episodes of PD Blue. I liked that. I really did. And uh, that was pretty much my nightly routine. And then uh, No Street Blues, which, you know, before that, I would, um, I don't really remember this. I think No Street Blues started at seven and ran to nine and then Blue would run from 9 to 11, I think. Yeah, that sounds right. I mean, I really like that. I wonder if they're still doing that because they don't show up on, on, uh, well, that's the thing. I'm not going to TV Guide too often anymore. So. But one thing I can't stand about a lot of these sub channels is just, just the commercials. I don't, I, I understand there's only a finite amount of money, but geez, wow, go and get better ads on there. I really, really can't stand these ads. The other thing, it dried up syndication. So, at the best, the stations now who weren't doing barter for syndication, most of them were. It wasn't a big deal for the ones who were doing barter. It is a big deal for the ones that were doing uh, straight up syndication where they would pay anywhere from $200 to uh, $1,200 per episode airing. Um, is, it, is, you know, where can I point this out? Well, I, I can't. Because I think um, a lot of them a lot of them were doing the barter model. And only a foolish station or a station that wanted a particular show so badly that they would go and resort to doing that. And I worked at a station like that where... If the guy was such a station manager, he would have known about barter. And if he known about barter, and we did get one show on barter, which 
I don't know, I aired it anyways, as filler. But, I mean, you know, there's nothing wrong. Barter is the way to go. Let, let the company who made the show go ahead and sell the airtime. Don't, don't, don't rely on us. We, we'll sell two minutes of airtime an hour. But we don't have to pay anything but the transmitter fee. So find out how much the transmitter costs and so forth and so on. And so if we spend this much on everything, then we need to bring in three times as much. It's simple business. But I say that, and I can do it, but so many people can't. So many people want to be a tycoon, and they can't. And, you know, at the same time, I can't cook. Not completely true. I can cook certain things, but no, I really, I can't cook as in, I don't have the patience for cooking. When someone says I can't, it's a self-imposed limitation, unless, uh, unless they're like, I don't know, falling off a building or the, the sun exploded or something like that. So, when I say I can't, I do mean it. I'm giving myself a self-imposed limitation. Do not do something. My idea of cooking is the microwave. My idea of gourmet is, is beer and boyardee for the rest of my life. So, I think that the digital television, it has been a fail. In markets like Las Vegas, they always say Las Vegas is a small market. Bullshit. That's bullshit. Well, I understand the biggest markets are always going to be L.A., New York, Houston, Chicago. No, that's it. Those are the biggest markets in the United States. Uh, something I want to point out is you'll be surprised how many cities think they're big but aren't big in the United States. Las Vegas is a genuinely big town, but... Even it is not as big as it thinks it is. Um, I believe that in the actual city limits, there's, there's not a million people. There's a million people, I think, spread out throughout the whole Clark County. But still, it's not just that. Um, I got an email from a guy in Arizona, Flagstaff. And he told me, and for the longest part of his life, they used to watch Las Vegas stations. Las Vegas stations used to come in there, it's only crystal clear, through the translator. And one day it just stopped. And that's surprising. So, I know from the translator list that not only does it cover all of Clark County, it goes more or less in like a like a 200 mile circle. Um, it used to be that a lot of Las Vegas stations had translators going way, way up to the border of the state with Montana and Oregon. Going into Utah and stuff like that. So, um, I don't have any first-hand testimony other than the guy from Flagstaff. But what I'm saying obviously is what I'm saying. We used to cover as, as a whole market almost uh, all of Nevada and uh, through DXing Idaho, Oregon, maybe even Montana, Wyoming, obviously Utah, and uh, maybe even into certain parts of Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, California. And uh, I've heard on uh, KDWN 720 AM, the uh, DJ there, uh, not really a DJ, but the host, True Hawkins, said that sometimes that even the signals from not just Las Vegas, but many TV stations west of the Rockies will end up broadcasting over most of the Pacific way over to the Philippines, Japan, Taiwan, Kamchatka, in Indonesia, so that's pretty neat. But as far as Las Vegas goes, 
Um, I just know that there was a time before, especially before the digital switch, that the translators would cover most of Nevada and what I just said, the surrounding area of areas that would border Nevada and then from Las Vegas outward a 200 mile, maybe 150 mile radius. And that was pretty nice, I believe, as a service, Make, making our market much, much, much bigger. And there's a way to exploit that. And I mean exploit, I mean for a good reason, for a business reason. Not that it ever happened. I mean, maybe on occasion or something, but... Nothing, nothing outstandingly great. I remember once when I was at the station, a particular sales rep gives me this thing and says, you know, we have to get this commercial on the air. She got a woodworking company in Michigan, and we're in Trump, Nevada, where the, the uh, origination uh, station was. And it's like, wait, what? Yeah, I'm, I got this woodworking. Okay, whatever, you sold the airtime, so we'll air it. Um, later, she comes in and tells me, well, no, not one person called them. It's like, well, yeah, what the hell were you thinking? You, you went to Michigan. They, they either thought they were buying a, a national spot at a discount or a station that, other than Las Vegas, Pahrump, Shoshone, Crystal, you know, these surrounding areas, you know, maybe northern Arizona at the extreme extremity of Nevada, Nevada's border. Other than that, um, you know, it's like, who, who in the world would buy woodworking that they would have to get all the way from somebody else? <laughs> all the, you know, from somebody else all the way in Michigan. I'm not ragging on Michigan. I'm ragging at the sales rep who did this. Just like, you know, not much brains in that operation, obviously. But commission does weird things. It makes people think like Alec Baldwin in Glen Glary, Glen Ross. Um, I'm, I'm not even. I'm not going to bother saying anything about Alec Baldwin himself. I don't have anything. Against him personally, I don't know him. I mean, that's what he performs as on uh, television and movies. I don't know that. I don't know anything about him. So I don't have anything to say about. It. I'm just saying that his character seems like that. This is what this is what the sales rep was thinking. That she's all badass by. Maybe she watched that movie in Boiler Room and Wall Street a little too much. And she's thinking that she's a she's a commission badass who's always closing. All right, you can do that, but I have to have consistency in the commercials. I got to have them renewed constantly. And I just had a bad sales team. All right, what does that have to do with digital TV? Well, the commercials turn people off. The commercials show that you're part of something. Well, why do you think commercials get such high views on YouTube? Right? that um, when people uh, ask me for VHS tapes I, um, I always say okay I will send you a VHS tape or DVD of the tape as commercials uh, commercials seem to be what people want more than so much the shows and um, unless the show is particularly rare no longer on the air that has to rhyme that way uh, I, I don't I don't bother uploading it or anything like that. I do my best to respect any copyrights that are acknowledged to a degree. I mean there 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 is excessive copyright trolling on YouTube, we all know that. But I'm going back to what I'm saying about commercials. You know people don't want to see these one eight hundred buy Billy Mays type product commercials or 1-800, please give to uh, these tragic charities or whatever. And no one wants to see that. And they don't want to see the same local commercials that were that bought over and over again. I'm looking at MeTV in Las Vegas. 
I mean, it's it's just like people don't want, they want some normal commercials. They want to see McDonald's. They want to see cereal. They want to see uh, batteries. They want to see a car commercial to a degree. They want to see a Visa commercial. They want to see whatever. I know what the audience wants. They want normal commercials. Uh, and, um, you know, they don't want to see it, but even even normal style PSAs can make a difference on, on these digital channels. They just don't have good sales rep. And I don't think anyone really takes these channels seriously. I mean, they might at their own corporate level, but we don't. Um, with the exception of me TV, Antenna TV, and Cozy TV, I haven't seen anyone go real gaga over these channels. In Las Vegas, we don't even have Kubo, if that's even a channel anymore. Funimation even had a digital channel. Can you believe that? An all anime digital channel. Oh, it didn't take off, because the anime is popular is a myth. Anime is not popular. If it was popular, where's the money? Even the torrents can show that it's not popular. They worry about piracy and everything. But when the product's just not any good, in anime's case, then no, that... That has absolutely nothing to do with popularity and ratings. It's just not popular overall. Because of poor storylines and everything. It's like the anime games on PS Vita, PS4, PS3. Nine, nine out of ten of these in my own ownership seems to deal with just having the girl constantly flashing her panties or bouncing her boobs or something. Which all started with Dead or Alive which actually goes back to my Shiro Nui and Chun-Li back in 1992. 91, 92, but most people played Street Fighter 2 in 92. And uh, to a degree, Sonya Blade and Katana Molina. And, and obviously, uh, starting with the N64 polygonal version of Princess Peach and uh, Princess Zelda. Once these all came about, um, and obviously Samus, so it it was a, a, an accumulation, no accumulation of things, just all kind of going into this perfect storm. Uh, I don't take that lightly because I understand the perfect storm itself killed people, but it's this accumulation of things and, and uh, these points I made, these women. They came out, and in Japan, it seems to be that's the only driving force for gaming. I can be completely wrong. I mean, there's a reason why uh, Retrocore may have bought, went ahead and bought a uh, Xbox 360 and Xbox One, despite these being very poorly received systems in Japan. When everything is either a cute game or a sexual, hyper-sexualized game, Maybe there's not really much in the way of gaming, right? Okay. So, it goes the same. Funimation had this digital channel, but, you know, what do, what do people really want to watch anime for? Despite what some hardcore fans or whatever want, this is what people watch anime for. I believe there's a... At, I don't know if it's at the Internet Archive or if it still exists, but there used to be an AnimeSucks.com or something like that. And um, anime is mostly watched, and the reason Sailor Moon is so popular is mostly watched because people want to see tits and ass and cute girls. That's it. May, men and women alike. Boys and girls alike. And if you want to debate that or not, try to tell me it's an art form or no. It's the cheapest form of getting a story out in Japan. That's all it is. Inspired completely by Walt Disney. That's why anime has big eyes and, and uh, fluidity and all that stuff. It all came out of Walt Disney, but um, anime and poor Funimation here, uh, they might be laughing all the way to the bank, but they're not exactly in the clear either. So they had the Funimation channel, and it was an over-the-air affiliation, and I don't think anyone signed up. I, we were going to sign up at the station I was at. We dug up all the info only to find out the stream was long gone. 
We would have loved that. The reason is we can anim... I mean, as much as it, it, it pains me to see people of my generation become their parents. They totally became their parents. These anime-watching, PlayStation-playing, listen to the Spice Girls, saw the movie Hackers, Pierce Brosnan is their James Bond people, are now the very people who, who are as dumb as dog shit as their parents were at the same time. They don't play video games, they don't know anything about video games, and they start calling anime cartoons. Who are these people? Are we from the same generation? I'm older than some of these people. There's no way, unless I'm living in a computer or something. I can't believe it. And that's the other problem with digital TV. It's still perceived as new by these, 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 these wannabes. These posers. How can they be the same generation? The same generation that everyone subscribed to Nintendo Power. Everyone had an NES. Everyone watched Sailor Moon on Toonami. That's this generation. I mean, good lord, I turned blue in the face explaining to them what anime is. Me and Phil. I had to fight to get it on the air. Only the comic book shop owner seemed uh, wanting to uh, buy a commercial time on anime. And then when I later, I read his contract, and later I told him, and yeah, I was correct. He bought airtime for the whole station, not just for anime. And I had to tell him the truth. You know, they, own, they, they see it as cartoons. Just rewind. Where where was a person 20 years ago? That's all you have to ask to see these people. These were the people. They were the ones going out. Doing all that stupid trendy stuff in the late 90s that their kids are, are, are posers about today. And I saw a movie trailer that has them singing along to the Spice Girls. Why is that wrong? Because these kids don't know the Spice Girls. Oh, that's right. It's still 1990 or 1997 to everyone in Hollywood, right? So, with, with digital TV, it to me, it was a complete and abject failure right now. And I guess it's still going through growing pains. After television was nice, slick, and functioning like a well-oiled machine, it got disrupted. And it's not, it's not going to come back. The, the next well-oiled machines will be Hulu, Netflix, YouTube, and Amazon's video offerings. That's it. Everyone out, well, Crunchyroll would, will kind of be there, but not really. A lot of the Crunchyroll stuff's on Hulu or Netflix. And um, that's just the way it's going to be. YouTube is going to be the Wild West. And the, but what Google really needs to do is just... Look, I know they want ad money and stuff, but how is Hollywood going to have the money to pay for the ads? If they, that, that's who they're going after. If they didn't have to play ball with that and had, you know, the other companies just buying ads who aren't in the uh, copyright fascism business, uh, it would work out well. So speaking of public domain. Um... No, no, not speaking of it. Anyway, so uh, that's C-O-F-F-E-E, -E, number four, B-I-N-K-Y, at gmail.com. Coffee for Binky at gmail.com. Please consider helping me make this be a better show. Uh, uh, whatever. Okay. <laughs>